Most of the exotics in Destiny 2 have value even if it's niche, but some things take that niche too far. Swords have always been incredibly satisfying to use, but they're completely impractical. And this week, Xur is selling an exotic sword, the Black Talon, in addition to three armor pieces. Today, instead of breaking down the armor, we're going to look at some ways to optimize the Black Talon. Let's get started. Alright folks, it's time for us to dive into the Black Talon. I have never been a huge fan of using swords in a serious manner in Destiny 2, but I've always enjoyed them quite a bit. But over the years, it's become easier and easier for you to integrate this weapon type into your loadout and not be a complete troll. And at the current stage of Destiny 2, I think I'm willing to say that you can reasonably bring a sword into some of the game's most difficult content. It's not going to be practical everywhere, but in a 980 Nightfall, Nightmare Hunts, the Sundial, there are a lot of different activities where you can reasonably bring a sword and not be the biggest detriment to your team ever. There are always going to be more practical ways to play the game, but if you want to take the time to master something really cool, a sword is definitely the way to go, and the Black Talon is 100% a sword you would want to use. So the first thing that we're going to do is break down the Black Talon, how it functions, and what its catalyst does. And we're going to take it into some Lost Sectors first and play around with it so we can see what it looks like, and then we're going to go into a classic Nightfall to challenge ourselves a little bit more so we have more enemies that are more threatening trying to kill us. The Black Talon's exotic trait is Crow's Wings. It allows you to use a ranged attack. Its secondary trait is Tireless Blade. You can find this on legendary swords as well. Sword ammo is granted for every other sword kill. So that's gonna make the weapon very efficient. Finally, the Catalyst shots blocked immediately after guarding increase the damage of Crow's Wings, your ranged attack, for a very short duration. The damage increase is about 33%, which is reasonable. Now what we're going to do to make using the Exotic Catalyst effect more consistent, more reliable, and even more beneficial to us is equip the Stronghold Exotic Gauntlets on our Titan. The exotic armor perk is Clenched Fist. Guarding with swords increases move speed and does not drain ammo. Shots blocked immediately after guarding will heal you. So we've got a pseudo fighting game mechanic going on where we can raise our guard and almost parry projectiles, kind of like a Jedi, and we'll get a heal from that and we'll trigger the catalyst effect on the Black Talon, causing our ranged attack to do increased damage. So what we're going to do once we get into the field is flow between ranged attacks for the beefier enemies or for when enemies are packed really close together and our light attack for just general ad clear. And to make things a little bit smoother for myself, I am using on my class item the protective light mod. While charged with light, you gain significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. The effect consumes all stacks of charged with light, and the more stacks that are consumed, the longer the damage resistance lasts. I also have Bulwark Finisher. Finisher Final Blows generate an overshield, but it consumes one fourth of your super energy. So that's gonna be almost an emergency button or something that I can use if I feel like I need extra survivability to really get in and start slicing enemies to bits. The last few things that are noteworthy, I have a heavy ammo finder on my helmet and a heavy ammo scavenger on my boots, which will make it easier for me to keep the Black Talon full of ammunition. Now let's head down to the moon and go through some lost sectors, start chopping some enemies up. All right, we are inside the K1 communion lost sector and it's time to show off the Black Talon. The exotic effect allows us to send out that projectile. It does a decent amount of damage, and if we raise our guard while we're being shot, we gain the buff reversal for just about a second. And then if we send out that ranged attack while reversal is active, we will deal that 33% bonus damage. And also, whenever we're doing this, if the timing is right, then I will also gain a small heal from the stronghold exotic gloves. Now the main thing to keep in mind when using a sword is that it should be a supplement to your normal weapons in the same way a heavy weapon is normally a supplement to your normal play flow. This is not something that is meant to completely take the place of my normal moment to moment gameplay where I'm using my primary, I'm using my, my special weapon which in this case is a shotgun. It's just that f it's, it's a filler. 
Now granted, swords can be incredibly efficient, especially when you have a trait like Tireless Blade working in the background. Essentially every time I use two ammo, it's like I'm only using one ammo provided I am getting kills. I still don't necessarily always want to run around with the sword out and, and the guard raised. I do still want to occasionally engage with the game like a normal Destiny player with my guns. Unfortunately, that radius really proving to be incredibly small. But the bonus damage that we get from the Catalyst is still worth using against Meteor targets. All right, we've got the boss coming out. And once he starts shooting at me, I'm gonna raise that guard and just get that bonus damage. And I will throw a grenade down at his feet. And camera angle's a little bit wonky, but I'm just gonna slice him up with that light attack and make quick work of him. We couldn't see the health bar there, but that's okay. The boss went down, no problem. Now, even though I do get the bonus damage every time I, I raise that guard and, and basically parry a projectile, if I'm going up against a boss, I don't necessarily want to fish for parries and try to be a Jedi and, and block every single bullet so that every heavy attack that I send out has the bonus damage. Sometimes I just want to get in there and spam that light attack and kill the target as quickly as possible. But if something like a servitor is coming out and I want to burst it down very quickly, or get an initial burst of damage, then the reprisal effect is going to be great for that. It's also great for blocking against exploding enemies. So we've got the easy stuff out of the way. Now what we're going to do is head into one of the classic Nightfalls. And I think we can do the inverted spire. This one is... Mm, it can it can be kind of frustrating. Before we start hacking and slashing and going crazy, I want to show off a little bit of the defensive prowess that you gain because of the stronghold exotic gloves. I can tank a considerable amount of damage just by raising the guard and standing in front of enemies. Even exploding fanatics will well, he's kind of confused because of my barricade. But I am very durable because of this exotic, and I can utilize this to reposition myself should I find myself overwhelmed by the enemies that I'm facing. And because we have Hydras, it is actually going to be kind of difficult for me to deal with some of this stuff, but I will try my best to make use of all of this stuff together. So we're triggering the catalyst effect a lot, as well as the heal, and that is allowing me to stay in the action pretty consistently. But here, I'm just getting hammered, so I'm going to have to raise that guard and pull away and just put up my normal barricade. And I'm going to switch over to my primary weapon, throw out my grenades, and allow those things to do their work as they're supposed to. And this is the, the balance and the flow that we're going to have to engage with. We're going to have to be switching between using the sword and doing the fancy stuff and then playing the game like normal. I actually ran out of sword ammo because I was being a little bit too greedy with it, but that's okay. We got rid of the Hydra and we just have one more to deal with and that is going to be the most annoying threat on this particular battlefield. Unfortunately, with my shotgun, I can't really do that much while he's firing that ridiculous volley of attacks at me. One more shot should do the trick. Yes, it will. So far, so good. And he dropped some ammo for us as well. So we're back up to 23 swings. So that right there, we're doing okay. You know, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm losing out on anything by bringing the Black Talon. It's just forcing me into an alternative play style. And when I manipulate it correctly, the results are nice. And right here, we can make use of Tireless Blade, kill two enemies, but only consume one ammo. And then when you get a nice tight grouping, you can go in with that heavy attack and get double kills, triple kills. It all depends on how tight the grouping of enemies is. No, the ammo. Oh, no. The ammo fell off the side. That's horrible. 
This next bit of the Nightfall is going to put us against some enemies that are at extremely long ranges, so it's going to be a lot more difficult for me to fight with my sword consistently, but when things do get up close and personal, I will be able to whip it out and shred through some, some, some trash. So I'm going to use the bow to clear out those scions at the top of the ridge. If I can stop missing, that would be great. And then we have a Colossus up there with an arc shield. So I'm going to run around and hit him in the back with my shotgun, followed by a one-two punch. He's going to use his stomp. So I'll put up the barricade to mitigate the damage from that. I got a nice tight pack of guys right here. I'll throw my void wall down and that'll make very quick work of them. This guy has an arc shield. I'm gonna put up my barricade. He is gonna push through it a little bit and I can just chop him through it. And if I want to, I can use my finisher even while my sword is out to get an overshield. And this is gonna make me a bit more durable going into this next encounter. But unfortunately the enemies are a bit too preoccupied with each other and we're not gonna get to see just how much damage I can tank with my shield. But that's okay. Yeah, what the hell, let's get another one. Hit me, come on. That's a nice little shield. I'm not gonna get a third one because that, that seems excessive, but it is something that I can keep in mind. I'm surprised I haven't had to use it more often, but there's still a decent bit more of this Nightfall to go through. So who knows, I might get to use it. I'm gonna throw down another void wall and actually put up my barricade so I don't take too much damage from these guys. So far, so good. It, it, it feels nice using a sword when your whole build is tailored around it. But if, if I was going in here without the stronghold and just, you know, using some other exotic that was tailored towards, like, grenade cooldown reduction or whatever, I would not be having a good time. The... the 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 whole armor set working together is what's really making this build feel some, like it's possible. All right, now we've got to do... Uh, it's not really objective defense, but we have to wait for a progress bar to fill up, and there's going to be a lot of enemies pushing into us over here. So I'm going to make use of those void wall grenades again. And every time those Void Detonators go off, they are healing me, so I have a little bit of extra defenses from that as well. And I can make use of my Barricade as well to crowd control some of the enemies, which is also nice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, let's just throw down a grenade. Let the Void Detonators heal me a little bit. These dogs are causing me a bit more problems than I would like them to, but so far so good. Let's reapply the barricade. Ah, oh, that looked way too cool. I didn't need to use my finisher there, but I should have used it sooner, if I'm honest. But I kind of panicked when everything was getting a little bit crazy. I should have... Something that I 100% should have done is when my health was really low and sheltered by the void was procced, I could have either called out a barricade or switched over to my primary and then used that to weaken an enemy and then gone in for a finisher. That's definitely something I gotta be smarter about going forward, but we're, we're doing a, a great job of clearing through these enemies. Well, we're pretty much at the end of the Nightfall. We just have to clear out a little bit more trash and then go kill the boss, but I'm out of sword ammo, so we're gonna head back to orbit. But th this was really enjoyable and for, for the longest time I've, I've wanted to make a playstyle centered around swords feel passable at the very least in content like the sundial and maybe even the lower tiers of the nightfall ordeal like the 950 nightfall ordeal something like that and 
This is definitely something I would feel comfortable and confident bringing into those environments because of the power that you gain from defense. You get so much sustainability from the stronghold and your offensive prowess is pretty decent as well because of the reversal exotic catalyst effect on the black talent. So I suppose what we could do to wrap things up is switch over to the Warlock and mess around a little bit there because the Warlock does have the ability to sustain themselves in a brawl incredibly well with the bottom branch of the Voidwalker, the Attunement of Hunger, and then we can wrap things up after that. The Hunter does not work extremely well with swords because they don't have any ways to sustain themselves to such a high degree the same way the Titan can with the Stronghold and Void Detonators or the Warlock with the Void Walker and the Devour. Okay, I switched over to the Warlock and I transferred over the same weapons that I was using for my Titan. So we've got the Accured Redemption Bow, the Prophet of Doom Shotgun, and the Black Talon for our Exotic Sword. And my armor is configured in a very similar way. I have Protective Light, I have Stacks on Stacks, Bulwark Finisher, I've got the scavengers for the sword and I have the ammo finder for it as well. So the overall feel of our playstyle is going to be similar, but because we're playing as the attunement of hunger, I am going to be free to be a lot more aggressive because every single time I get a kill, my health is going to pop back up to maximum. Another thing that's going to be really exciting is I am pairing this with the Nezerak Sin exotic helmet. The exotic perk Abyssal Extractor's Void Damage Kills Increase Ability Recharge Rate is going to synergize extremely well with the Black Talon. It's so easy to get kills with that thing once you get into close quarters. So I'm going to chop, 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 chop enemies to bits. I will get the stacks of Abyssal Extractors, get that timer up. And the coolest thing about Abyssal Extractors is it increases the regeneration rate of my grenade, my melee, and my super. So if I want to... I can be a little bit aggressive about how I use my finishers and, and really chain those bulwark finishers together for seemingly endless overshields, but I might not need to do that because of the amount of sustain that I get from Devour. But with all of that said, we're going to head out into another classic Nightfall. This time we'll do the Arms Dealer. That one is pretty challenging to play solo because there's just such a high concentration of enemies, but it's also a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites. Another thing that's going to be a little bit different about my play style is I'm not going to be able to use my guard as often because normally when you guard with a sword, your ammo gets drained based on how much damage you're taking. So if I start to take a huge chunk of damage, I'm going to drain a lot of ammo and that's not what I want to happen. So I am going to try to use the catalyst a little bit more accurately and I'm not going to be holding that guard steady to, to really try and milk a, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of defense out of it and, and I'm not gonna be able to use it to reposition myself which is a bit unfortunate but it is what it is there's always gonna be pros and cons to everything You can die like that. All right. Th this part of the strike is honestly the most difficult. And it, uh, so many times when I've tried to to talk while playing this part of the strike, I've gotten destroyed. So I decided to go to go full serious mode and, and clear things out and it, it seemed to have been the right decision. So moving forward, what I've got to do here is deal with some dogs and I'm gonna just bow them down as they're walking forward. If I was playing my Titan, I could put up my barricade to slow down their advance a little bit. But at this point, now I wanna push in and deal with this guy with my shotgun and hopefully not die to the Thresher. And I do have a grenade that I can... Why am I... <laughs> 
That was quite possibly the most ridiculous thing that has ever happened to me while playing Destiny. I flung myself off of a ledge by Warlock skating. That was horrible. So what I gotta do here is plant the bomb into an objective and I'm gonna do so and now that that has been taken care of I can start shredding through enemies with my sword. That is a lot of dogs but they will be dealt with expeditiously by my sword. The ranged attack on the Black Talon is great for when enemies start pushing into you very aggressively. I was a little bit too close to that scatter grenade when I threw it out. I almost killed myself with it. That's something you got to be careful about. Now this, this, this is actually a, a bit of a dangerous situation that I'm in. There were a lot of enemies firing at me simultaneously and again because I don't have the stronghold on I can't just hold down the guard it'll drain basically all of my ammo if they're all shooting at me at the same time but thankfully I was able to raise it for that quick instant get the reversal effect to trigger and then send out the crow's wing to damage a, a pretty large group of enemies whoa buddy so yeah this is this is another really awesome way to engage with a sword it's a lot more aggressive but if you can manage to keep a cool and level head while also really putting the business down on the enemies it's it's very satisfying and very fun to manipulate so we got a little bit more stuff to do in the nightfall and i will clear out one more section of it and then we'll wrap things up There we go. It's, th this playstyle is actually really hard to do while talking at the same time because I, I really got to pay attention to raising that guard at the perfect moment to get reprisal to trigger and then sending out the shot so that it kills an enemy so that devour activates so that I don't instantly get destroyed. There's so much stuff going on with this, but it's very, very fun to try and master this kind of playstyle. Overall, this has been a pretty solid demonstration of the Black Talon. It's a very fun weapon to use, and it is one that you can use and not be a detriment to your team, provided you understand that if you do not build around your sword, you're going to die. If you don't have insane survivability, fighting in close quarters combat with a sword is a bad freaking idea. If I really wanted to prove a point, I could go into this next encounter and not use Devour, and you guys could watch how quickly my health depletes. There have been so many countless moments across this, this Nightfall where having a way to restore my health on kill has completely saved my life. So remember, if you're going to use a sword, remember, man, remember, you got to have a way to get your health back and stay in that fight. And also, don't be afraid to take out your primary to deal with enemies like the Cabal Phalanx with their shields. It is very difficult to kill a Phalanx with a sword, and it's oftentimes it's going to be a waste of ammo. And there we go. That's going to do it for the video for today. The Black Talon is a lot of fun to use, and the Charge with Light system makes it even more practical to go in and use it. That Protective Light mod is very strong. So again, if you don't have the Black Talon, Zer's selling it right now. Go buy it before he goes back to wherever he goes when he's not on one of the planets. As always, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support the channel more than you already do just by watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting, you can head over to patreon.com slash iblueairjgr to become a patron. The name of the game is Destiny 2, the name of the channel is iblueairjgr. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.